may have heard the beginning of this story before. It started seven years ago in the Gulf of Mexico. There is an oil platform, a fire, 11 people died, and a lot of oil spilled into the ocean. It was called the Deepwater Horizon oil spill. And it sucked. But despite all the bad, some good came out of this disaster. Scientific research. Scientists from around the world came together to study the currents in the ocean in new ways. And to do it, they had to ask themselves, how can we measure the currents accurately? The answer may seem easy. Strap a GPS onto something that floats, and voila, you've got a current drifter, right? But soon they realized that it's not that simple. Drifters need to be designed in very specific ways, and to learn about all the complex things that happen in the ocean, they would need thousands of them. Because measuring ocean currents is like shooting a video with a camera. Your camera has a maximum resolution, or the number of pixels in each image, and a frame rate, the number of images captured each second. If your camera resolution is too low, you won't be able to tell what is happening in each image. And if the frame rate is too slow, you'll miss how things are changing in time. Taking measurements in the ocean is the same. Scientists need lots of measurements every few minutes. That's why we need lots of drifters. They already had a drifter design they knew would work. They named him Bob, but he was big and made of thick plastic, and releasing thousands of him into the ocean would equate to tons of plastic pollution. We can't pollute the ocean. We need a design that is biodegradable. The first attempt was made of wood. It was easy to cut and assemble, but it stood too tall out of the water, allowing the wind to blow it every which way. We are so disappointed. We have failed but they refused to give up. On the second version, they removed the mast and added a circular float, but then they noticed that the motion of the waves would cause the drifter to move against the current. I am so confused. Me too. Then they tried decoupling the float from the counterweight, and the wave motion stopped. It's working! Yay! The new design worked well in the lab, so they took it to the ocean to test. But after a few weeks, water absorbed into the wood, and it sank. We are so disappointed. We have failed. But they refused to give up. We cannot have a drifter that absorbs water. We need a different material. They tried plywood, cork, and bamboo, but nothing worked. They replaced a wooden float with aluminum and gum rubber. But after two weeks, they still sunk. We need something like plastic, but biodegradable. And after some research, they learned about polyhydroxy uh, or PHA, a type of polyester made of bacterial fermentation of sugar. With this, they could make a waterproof and biodegradable drifter that would slowly get eaten by bacteria in the sea. The scientists were happy. Yeah, yes. With a design that worked and a biodegradable material, they put thousands of them on a boat and journeyed out into the Gulf of Mexico. Out at sea, they assembled each drifter, one by one, part by part. Some of them went together easily, some less easily. Once they were built, they deployed them in configurations that would teach them about how current flows. Sometimes they would do this in calm seas, and sometimes in stormy seas. The work was hard, dangerous, but they pressed on. All in all, they deployed 1,000 drifters across the northern Gulf of Mexico, making it the largest ocean drifter experiment ever performed. The drifter design worked, and for three months, they transmitted the strength of the ocean currents teaching us more about the ocean than we ever knew before. The scientists also learned that every time they failed, they learned something new, and through hard work and determination, they would eventually succeed. The end. To learn more about this research, visit www.carthe.org.